This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined for the second time by top German heavyweight Christian Toon. How are you doing? Thank you, Danny. I'm really well. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, last time we spoke, you were heading towards a fight with Lucas Brown, um, which for one reason or another did not come to fruition. Just tell us the story behind that. What, why didn't it happen? And when will we see you back in the ring? Okay, so, um, I mean, as we might have heard, uh, Australia is a really crazy country with COVID regulations and, and, mm. and all the COVID uh, uh, vaccine regulations and travel restrictions and whatnot. Um, and believe it or not, there were no return possibilities for Lucas Brown unless he's had to do major quarantines and what kind of, and, and, and all sorts of stuff because I believe he's not really keen on taking the vaccine. So he would have encountered some major problems on, on his return. But to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what, ha what would have happened to his return. I just know that he, uh, he would have had massive uh, quarantine problems basically on his way, on his way back. Probably would have made it to Dubai somehow. But he yeah, would have struggled to come back. Once again, you know, things were starting to, to you know, take a bit of a funny turn towards the last couple of weeks of camp just because I was hearing that he wasn't really in the right mood, the videos he was posting and that. So I'm not sure what exactly happened. It's just a shame and unfortunately things, uh, you know, turn out to uh, end the way that they did end it. But it's okay, I guess, you know, everybody had their fair share of bad luck with COVID. Let's put it this way. <laughs> so when will we see you back out? When, when's that likely to be? Okay. You know what, Danny? I... We, um, essentially, I've signed my new my new contract now. It's still a little bit uh, confidential as of now. I'm not sure if it's confidential or not. I just rather not uh, disclose <laughs> it as of now. I, I've tried to reach them, but you know, I, I so I'm going to be fighting on. I'm gonna say mid to late November here in the United States. Um, you know, I'm in camp already. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I mean, we spoke yesterday. Everything is everything under control. We have a couple of opponents in mind already. Uh, it's 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 not gonna be anything uh, anything. Uh, it's not gonna be flesh upon us. It's gonna be, you know, local American, you know, durable journeyman. Just get get it going again. You know, I've been now unfortunately inactive in November. Fine enough. Uh, if I'm going to be fighting November 19th, it's going to be exactly one year I was inactive, which wow. is to be honest ridiculous. Which, however, would lead me to my next point is that I wasn't really inactive. It's not like I was you know, incarcerated or, or, or whatever, you know, like some of these fighters get. I was actually pretty active because since my last fight, I've done two AJ camps, then the pool of camp, pretty much throughout my previous fight camp. Then I've done another uh, AJ, I guess, uh, uh, you know, sparring camp. Then I was with, uh, with Tyson Fury throughout April, May, June, July. So I've been pretty much four months with Tyson and, you know, all the, all the uh, all the boys up there in Vegas, you know, John uh, Anderson, uh, Ifa Jagbas, uh, uh, um, Big Bad Joe, uh, Australia, I believe his name is Joe Goodall. He's uh, an outstanding of, uh, Australian prospect. I believe eight and all with one draw. I believe World Championships bronze medalist or something. So it's not like I was an actor. I was, as a matter of fact, really active, perhaps even too active. Uh, but I haven't been in the ring. And, uh, you know, there is, uh, uh, there is a big uh, difference between sparring and this and that and fighting. We all know, and I completely agree with that. However, uh, my inactivity was more of a, on, a, on a fighting nature. I still learned a lot. I grew a lot. I sparred a lot. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, uh, showcase this in my next fight, whoever is going to be against me. Now, you said you've been in two uh, sparring camps with Joshua not too long ago. Were you surprised yeah. by his defeat to Alexander Usyk recently? Um, I mean, to be honest, I was somewhat surprised. On, on the other hand, probably surprised is probably the wrong word for it. I was, um, I believe AJ just had a bad night at the office. You know, of course, strategies and, and there were certain things which, in my humble opinion, should have been done differently. Uh, However, you know, fighters are just humans at the end of the day. You know, he said a big fight against a really good guy. And I think that he just wasn't uh, himself on this particular day. We've seen him a little bit, 
you know, gun shy. We, we, we've seen him, I don't know, you know, we've seen him. Uh, he, he didn't really look like him. Usyk, to me, looked like Usyk looks fantastic. Mm. So a fantastic Usyk is going to beat pretty much anybody. Um, especially when there's anybody, in this case, Anthony Joshua, is a shadow of what he used to be because of, you know, he might have had, he might have not slept the night before. Who knows? You know, it might have purely been a, a thing like this because uh, he didn't really look like himself. I, I, I mean, strategies were also wrong because I believe that I've sparred plenty of really good cruiserweights. Uh, you know, like world title challenger, cruiserweights, uh, 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 great amateur cruiserweights. The last thing that you want to do is dance at their rhythm. Mm. What you want to do with them is since the first second of the fight start, you want to tell them, listen, my friend, you're in a completely different league now. I'm a monster and you're somewhat of a little, you're, you're, a, you're, a, I'm a lion and you're a kitten, right? You might be fast and that, but when we are in my cage, I'm going to be all over you. I'm going to, you know, you got to rough them up. And we've seen the likes of Derek Chisora, whom, by the way, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of. Mm. Uh, uh, however, we've seen a, a lesser boxer than Ante Joshua, like Derek Chisora, really posed massive problems to Usyk. And when I saw Usyk fighting at Chisora, I said to myself, there you go. That's exact the strategy to beat Usyk is to be all over him. No respect, just completely, you know, smother his work. Make the fight completely ugly as well, right? But what I didn't like in Usyk in this particular fight when he fought Chisora, he kept looking at the ref, like asking for help, kind of just mm-hmm. saying like, come on, that's, that's like, you know, he was complaining to the ref a lot. And this just shows that the way that Chisora fought him is the exact perfect way that you have to fight guys like Usyk, especially Usyk. Therefore, to answer your question, I believe that... Uh, at the end of the day, I was surprised. I was surprised of, not because Usyk won. I was surprised more that I was more surpro- surprised in the performance of AJ because he can do so much better. I know. I know he can do so much better. And we've all seen it. It's not like he hasn't. He's always kind of just made his fights or whatever. We've seen him perform uh, uh, fantastically. And uh, I believe that in a, in a rematch fight, if the strategies are going to be changed and if he's going to really, you know, use his physical attributes, size, strength. I mean, he's as strong as four men, Anthony Joshua. Let me tell you a lot of experience. He's as strong <laughs> as four men. So if he would use that, he would have a greater chance of winning and he would even up the odds and perhaps even be the, be, be the in my eyes, the favourite. Now you spent, as you said, four months with Tyson Fury uh, preparing for the first Wilder date in July, which was postponed, of course. Um, right. Were you invited back when he started preparing again for the new date? Um, yes. And, uh, well, the problem was that I am somewhat stuck in the United States of now because of some uh, travel problems. So I couldn't fly out to England. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm waiting for my green card now. It's not even COVID-related things. Uh, and I've applied for my green card. Therefore, once you apply for your green card, you have a certain status that you must remain within the United States borders for a certain period of time until you get your green card. And I'm, as a matter of fact, I just applied like uh, six, seven weeks ago. So I'm really fresh that I still might have to stay here for, you know, the next four or five months, which I don't mind because, to be honest, uh, uh, winter in Miami is uh, perfectly fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Still, uh, still, it would have been nice to go out to to uh, uh, more can be Manchester and, you know, help and, and learn some more, et cetera, et cetera. However, I must also say that, you know, I've spoken with some of the guys and things were really, let me put it this way, in the previous camp, the camp was a little bit really on the loose in terms of COVID and stuff, you know, there were too many people there, you know, the, I mean, the plan was to really have a low-key camp. Some of the some of the coaching staff, which usually is the gyms, before they come and come, really cut it down to the necessary and finish that, you know. There's people. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but you know the, yeah, but you know the the. I mean, there were uh, people were saying that yeah, it just excuses Tyson didn't have COVID. I can tell you, I can swear to you that not only I mean Tyson had COVID, everybody had COVID. Even my coach Michael, he said COVID. He was actually he was actually in the hospital. I uh-huh. wouldn't make this up. And some people have said that this time around, Fury has actually gone out to the US, to Vegas, too late, that he should have gone a bit earlier. What, what do you think of that? Um, 
I mean, arguably yes, but he is, he's only left so late because he's had the issue with he, his little daughter that was born and had some issues, but thank God she's fine now. So I, I believe it was like a matter of, you know, uh, solving the, the, or rather trying to solve the, or trying to be of support for, you know, his, his wife and obviously for, for the kid that was just born. So I think he's had quite a few battle, battles to fight with during this couple of weeks he was training. Uh, ideally, he should have come out maybe two weeks before that, maybe even a week before that. However, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that uh, I think it's, I think he it came out three weeks before the fight. I mean, it is still within like reasonable time to adapt. Mm. They say that you need one hour per time zone. Excuse me, you need one day per hour of time zone difference. Therefore, if you have between London and and uh, and Vegas, what is like eleven hours, maybe twelve hours? Uh, eight like, hours time difference. Oh, eight hours only. So therefore, so eight like days eight, in that eight days, theory. eight days, somewhat like if you would if you would ask a travel agency, what is the time to absorb a jet lag? They tell you uh, uh, a day or an hour per a day per hour change. However, clearly this is a bit of a you know you're going in there for a world title fight against uh, you know Deontay Wilder, probably one of the most dangerous punches in history. Therefore. I think two weeks is fine. You know, in an ideal world, a week or two more perhaps would have been good, but sometimes things, you know, I guess you have to deal with them sometimes. Now, you mentioned earlier Anthony Joshua's strength and that you'd felt that kind of up close in the sparring camps. What impressed you the most about Tyson Fury when you worked with him? Um, I mean, I knew that he would be a sensational boxer. I mean, he, he's really, really hard to hit, first of all. And second of all, he can really punch, you know, people didn't really, I mean, myself included, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, he can kind of bang, but, you know, I felt the likes of Wilder, I, you know, I spoke with Wilder, I felt the likes of Klitschko, I felt the likes of Joshua, of course, I really felt some big power in my, in my young career, and uh, I said, it's not, it, it, it's not going to be anything similar to that power, it's going to be strong, but not as strong. Whereas he caught me with a couple of shots clean and they were definitely really, really telling shots. Especially, I believe now that he's changed his style to a somewhat more pressing coming forward style, using his weight or rather putting his weight behind the punches. He can really bang like the top punches out there. I, I, I can promise you that. Uh, his style before was more to, you know, slip and slide, move, win the rounds and accumulative. Basically, just stop the guy by you know because the guy would have an eye like this and you know a bruised lip and whatnot and maybe just say okay enough is enough and how long ago did you spar wilder i sparred wilder fine enough it's gonna be a bit of a funny story right now i sparred wilder for the tyson fury one fight oh so the matter of fact it, the matter of fact it was in i can tell you it was like Late September of 2000, and what would have it would have been 2019, I believe. Late September yeah. 2019 or 2018. Well, anyways, for the wider one side, he said someone of a pre camp, and I was scheduled to have my third profile just like one or two weeks after. Therefore, I didn't really do much work with him because I essentially aspired him a couple of times and then I just left because uh, I had to go to my own fight. But during this uh, uh, spar, he essentially caught me with a big right hand, he split my eyelid open. And with a second right hand he caught me with, he actually uh, injured his hand. Therefore, you know, his, uh, one of his famous hand injuries actually come from this elbow right here. <laughs> 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 Believe it or not. So, yeah, I mean, he can definitely punch. Uh, Deontay Wilder is, I mean, everybody says he's a one-trick pony, and I guess I'm going to have to somewhat agree to it because at that level, if your punching power is really the telling thing that you have, I guess you're not the one trick pony. He's he got a fast kind of like uh, uh, fast jab, uh, but if you compare his boxing skills with you know the boxing skills of a Tyson Fury or, or Usyk or, or or AJ, I know people now are, are putting AJ casting him a little aside because he lost his last fight. But look what he's done. Uh, look when he outboxed Ruiz in the second fight. Look what he's done to Pulev to to you know other really good fighters. So he's definitely a great boxer still regardless of what happened in his last fight. Therefore, uh, Wilder, you know, he can punch with his uh, massive right hand, as we all know. 
uh, and this is always going to pose a threat to everybody who's going to fight. Now, before I let you go, and, and because the connection's not great and we don't want to chance our luck too much, tell us your prediction for the fight on Saturday. Uh, uh, yeah, what's going to happen? Okay, my prediction is Tyson Fury to come out slinging the kitchen sink, the microwave, <laughs> and the fridge down the wider and absolutely beating him. And within four or five rounds, it's time to be stopped. One way traffic, nothing else. I mean, Wilder's going to throw a couple of things, but he's going to have a 285 odd pounds Tyson Fury absolutely steaming forward with big, precise shots. You know, uh, 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 to his head, to his body, to his head, to his body, to his head, to his body. It, 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 it's just going to be too much. It, it's going to be too much for down. Therefore, my prediction is knockout win for Tyson Fury within six rounds. Christian, really appreciate your time. Um, look forward to seeing you back out um, in November. And when you're allowed to talk about your new um, deal, maybe you can come back on the channel and we can talk about that. Absolutely. Danny, I appreciate you very much. Thank you very much for, for having me on your channel. And absolutely, we'll be in touch soon.